Hello everyone, I'm Sharon Waxman, the CEO and the Editor-in-Chief of The Wrap. We're so happy to have you here for our award screening of the international film, Cinema Sabaya. Uh, it's an, is a film from Israel, the official entry for the Oscars. And joining us today are director Orit Fuchs-Rotem, uh, the producer Maya Fisher, and the actresses Dana Ivki and Joanna Said. And as I said, Cinema Sabaya is Israel's official entry for the international Oscar category this year. Welcome to you all. Thank you. Those of you who are on mute, you gotta unmute. All right. <laughs> um, we're gonna, terrific, thank you. So before we get going in the conversation, we wanna show you the trailer, then we'll have a chat with our panelists. To our audience, uh, if you want to participate in the live chat of the stream, you can share your thoughts about the film and also let us know where you're coming from and we'll find out where all of our guests are from too. But first, let's take a look at the trailer. Is it a problem? No, it's not a problem. I'm a problem. No, it's not a problem. What's up? Good morning. Good זה שיעור הבא, אני רוצה שכל אחת תצלם את המקום שלה. דוד, הקורס רטי מזכיר לי שכבר שנים שלא הלכנו לסרט. אחרי עשרים וחמש שנה צריך לחדש חוזה. בואו נעבור לתרגיל הבא. אני למדתי טוב טוב שאף אחד לא יכול להציל אותך חוץ ממך. את חזקה, אולי לא. <laughs> okay, so now it is my pleasure to introduce Orit Fuchs Rotem, Maya Fisher, Dana Ivgi, and Joanna Said. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So very just much. just out of curiosity, where are you guys coming from? Because our international screening series comes from all over the world. Are you in Israel? Are you in elsewhere? Are you in Palestine? Where are you? We're in Israel. <laughs> yeah. All of you. In Tel Aviv, okay. uh, mostly. Uh, Joanna Coming is the only the one north. that's not in Tel Aviv right now. <laughs> okay, Joanna, where are you at? I'm in my uh, home in uh, Kfar Yassif, which is a village up north in Israel. Very cool. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this film, which has gotten a lot of attention, has already gotten a number, uh, multiple awards for its treatment of the, it's very, I would say, thoughtful and um, subtle treatment of the political issues that go on in Israeli society, but also uh, just about the the women who uh, and how they interact and how they build their relationships. It's a very cool premise, which is this idea that they all, you all, all the women uh, it, characters in the film come together to learn how to use a camera. And it's got so many moments where it's like a film within a film within a film, and you've got all of these layers. Um, all right, let me start with you. So where did the film begin uh, from your own experience in, in uh, documentary filmmaking or, or how, did, how did it begin? Well, the idea came to me when uh, my mother uh, participated in a, a group like that, like the one in the film. Uh, she lives. She lives in Hadera, uh, the city that uh, described in in the film. And she she is the mayor advisor for women's issue, and she was one of the participants uh, in the, in a kind of course. 
and um, I like the idea of the platform of uh, just a women's world that can observe their life through cameras. And then I started making uh, research myself and made those kind of groups myself for a few years uh, with Jewish and Arab women and wrote it uh, while I did it. So what did you discover while you were, you were actually teaching uh, women how to film, how to make movies? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can film. And, and how, how did it get orchestrated that it was both um, Jewish Israeli women and Israeli Arab women? Was that just naturally the community that the course was being given and it just sort of naturally the women came together or was it intentional? Um, well, that's the course that my mother did. Uh, it's in a place, uh, a coexistence center in Israel that's called Givat mm. Chaviva, mm. Uh, which has a lot of activities for uh, Jewish and Arab together. And I went there and offered the course. Uh, I told them I'm doing a research for a film and they, uh, they liked the idea and they helped me get a group uh, and then another group and uh, we, we cooperated. In the, in, so, in so, it, so it actually is part of almost like no, building normal relationships, just building relationships in general across the, the communities. So I think yeah, what's, exactly. so much is not known to those of us who don't live in Israel. And I think there's a, there's, there's a presumption that, that it's constantly tense, that it's always like anger and hatred between is, um, Jews and Arabs all the time. This kind of pierces through that uh, in, in a really beautiful way. I, I'd love to hear from Dana, Joanna, about how your performances reflect what is uh, more of a, rea a balance or a more real reality of the day-to-day. -day. Well, like you said, you know, people that see Israel from the outside say, oh, don't you uh, walk around um, getting bombed all day or don't you, uh, that there's a war and, how do you walk around the streets? And so my experience at least is uh, when I meet people, it doesn't really matter to me, you know, where, where they're from or what did the, my government, <laughs> you know, the, the government that that's, a, I mean, it's, we, I feel a lot that it's a fight between, you know, generals and not really what we experience every day. And I think this is part of what was important to us to show that the people there, that they, you know, us care about many other things and would just like to, you know, be treated as people and be heard and, uh, and want to hear and, and want this dialogue. I think most people do. Mm. It, yeah, 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 uh, go ahead, yeah. Maya. No, no, if, I, if I can add to that, I, I, I really related to what you said about general, and I will add it's also it's general and men. And I think what's nice also um, that I, I think the film reflects in a way how uh, maybe the everyday lives and issues and what does it mean uh, to be a woman in Israel today and what are the real struggles and conflicts I don't think it makes like a too pink picture, but I think it really reflects like how how like what are the real issues and struggles and conflicts um, of women in Israel today. It's also interesting because it's it takes place not in a big city, not in Tel Aviv, or not in Jerusalem, where there's so much political tension, uh, because you're right in the heart of you know the the old city and uh, you know the. Palestinian state is right there, whereas Hadera is is more like just a regular place where Israeli Jews lives and Israeli Arabs live. Joanne, I want to uh, ask you to weigh in. Are you Arab yourself? Yes, I am Arab, uh, living here um, mm -hmm. in the north, but I also lived in Jerusalem, so I know what tension looks like. Yeah, um, but I've always experienced like Dana said, people as people. And I've seen from the most religious Jews to the most religious Arabs, um, from the two extremes and everything in between. And I've always seen people reaching out, wanting to be heard, wanting to learn about each other. And it was really interesting to 
to see this uh, workshop happening because we've had that every day. I've had people ask me those questions that happened in the workshop. They just want to know. And it's interesting because not knowing about each other makes us believe whatever the media is always posting and, and kind of brainwashing everyone to think about the relationships between people in Israel and making us be afraid of each other. And yet you walk the streets and you see um, many uh, Jewish Israelis coming to our Arab villages on their day off and vice versa. And daily life is very, very normal human to human interaction, no matter what the political uh, view the person comes from. And I think that is portrayed very beautifully in the movie. Yeah, it really is. And it's, it, I think it's very much going to, will surprise people who just know Israel from the headlines. Um, Joanna, Joanna, we should say that your character is somebody who wears the hijab, who's a traditional Muslim, I, I'm presuming Muslim. Um, actually, I think you say in the film that you are, and you have a lot of young children, you're quite young yourself, and you're exploring what you're, how you're allowed to step out of the lines that are defined for you and your culture and being in this group nudges you <laughs> to dare to step outside the lines. And I guess one of the things that's very beautiful about the film is that it shows how much the women have in common as women, regardless of political or cultural or religious or age or you know professional identities that there's so much that binds them that they can help each other even though there's a woman who lives on a boat by herself versus joanna's character who lives a very traditional muslim wife existence were, the, were these are you i don't know who you wrote the film yes um, you created this in the characters, or did the did the the actresses sort of help flesh this out for you as you were um, creating the project? How did that work? Um, both. I mean, I wrote characters uh, based on women I met, and after that, I changed it um, after meeting the actresses. I tried to make it as close to their lives and. Uh, for instance, you talked about Leora Levy, the, the woman that lives in the boat. Uh, her I met just uh, after I uh, wrote a script through my script editor, which uh, is kayaking, and uh, just met her on the, on the sea and yeah. told me I must meet her. And, uh, and then I met her and wrote her. And um, I just have to say that I, I, I'm, the character of Suad, for me, it's not a traditional Muslim, uh, like, um, a portrait of a woman it's really uh specific it's not like all the muslims in israel can drive or uh, it's very important for me not to make um, characters that says something about all the society i wanted them to be very specific and that's why i wrote uh, her based on someone that i really knew and also um after met meeting joanna uh, a lot of from her life came into the character in the mo in emotional way, not in the biographical way. Um, mm -hmm. So it was important for me to be really specific and not to to say something about the whole society in Israel, and uh, through this those characters. Yeah. Well, thank you for making that point. Um, I, I, when I was a journalist in Israel, and I was many years ago. I would go all around, you know, in then what was called the West Bank and meet many, many um, Palestinian people in villages and meet many people who were women who lived traditionally and had had a lot of children and didn't maybe didn't have a lot of agency and a lot of choice. So it, it rang like uh, true to me as, as people that I've met in my life and that rubs up against sort of the, the modernity in society that's there for Israeli women or Palestinian women who choose to not not wear a hijab or whatever you know so it's just such it's such a range it's such a range what has been the reaction uh when you've shown this film in in Israel what 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 are you getting back from from people who see it 
Um, well, for me, I've uh, had people come to me after screenings, uh, women with tears, um, saying how much they were touched by either my character or just the whole idea of this workshop of how necessary and in need we are to communicate with each other as women because no one would understand a woman but a woman um, living in this world. And I always say that the hijab is a metaphor for the woman that holds all secrets inside of her, that has to live a certain life that is written for her. And she doesn't have to be Muslim, she doesn't have to be religious, just in the society, in the Arab society inside of Israel and in every a society that is a bit more conservative and closed, there tends to be a lot of secrecy, a lot of uh, things happening behind closed doors. Christians and Muslims and Jews and all the religions that you can find also in the Jewish communities. Mm -hmm. And the hijab is just a metaphor for what a woman is hiding. There's so much struggle and pain that um, she's ashamed to come out because society shames women to speak out no matter where even the most modern ones still find that there is a big big price when they want to come out with what they've dealt with um anyone else yeah please hi yeah no sorry go ahead Anna. no oh, i think uh you were asking about the response for the movie and we're always very surprised that the first thing that happens is that people laugh a lot. Like we last screening we had in Los Angeles, right? We were sitting next to each other and Olit was saying to me like, did I, is this a stand up or what's going mm -hmm. on? Like people are really responding to it and laughing and, and crying and you know in israel even i heard some talk to the screen like someone someone says something there yeah you're right <laughs> and mm -hmm. it brings mm -hmm. really a wide range of reactions from from everyone in israel and i mean i don't know everyone i know it so far it's been screened in israel and the us but the response the responses are really strong and a lot of people tell us their stories immediately when they leave the screen and it reminded me of this and this and this in my life and also a reaction well it, really it has well it has such a documentary feel to it yes. so it's not surprising yeah. that yes. people are like yes i know that person and i know Rita, i'd say really like you know credit to you i think uh you know the the specificity of each character is so effective and convincing which so you sort of feel like you're watching a documentary i thought for like the first 20 minutes i really wasn't quite sure and then i thought of course it's not a documentary what's wrong with you <laughs> but it felt like it, it it could be and uh and there's another film i don't i don't know if you you've heard about or see but there's another film this season of the award season that is just women sitting around talking it's called women talking so there seems to yeah. be something in the air I mean, yeah. of course, it's a very, very different film and it's a very different circumstance. And those are women who've experienced violence. Um, it's but, time for women to talk, you're saying? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's our time to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah, I'm really what, curious to watch what this I film. wanted to tell you before is like we had we have some men coming out of the film, actually, and saying that what I what I know for sure is I'm going to be a better husband after watching ah. this yeah ah. like so that is one. it is I, I would i'm curious if there's you know um if israeli arabs or um you know i don't know if um palestinians get get to see have uh, theaters in, where they live in novelists or places like that if they are able to see um the film but what would be the reaction just in the sense of there's some just very subtle um, points that you drop in, like in the beginning when the women are all talking and there's a question of should we speak in Hebrew or should we speak in Arabic? And there's somebody who says, no, we should speak in Arabic because that's our language. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's almost like it's somebody steps in, I can't remember which character, Dana, might be yours and says, well, you know, or it, 
everybody speaks Hebrew, so we should just speak Hebrew. But it is, it's an yeah. assertion of identity at the same time. It's an yeah. assertion of who, you know, I want to be here as an, as an Arab or as a Muslim mm -hmm. uh, as, and, and have that validated and have that recognized. The, the character is saying that the, it's not me, it's the character that uh, is in charge of the chorus. And she says, uh, who's in it, who's, who herself because, is Arab, right? Yes. And she says, mm -hmm. because everyone's uh, all Arabs speak Hebrew and, uh, and, you know, and Jewish people don't speak Arab. What's the big deal? Like what's new? It's not supposed to be new to you. She, know, she deals with it as a, as a practical matter. Yeah, yeah. So you were joking about it. You know, that's the way it is. But actually, it's uh, pretty sad. It's sad. You know, what is what is sad? It's sad that it's not rooted in our life and system and education to speak both languages. Because mm -hmm. I think it's uh, it's like it's very deep. It's this place. It's our culture. It's like uh, I just started learning Arabic uh, not long ago, and I'm, I'm really ashamed that I didn't start before. And also, it's just it's so beautiful and natural for me to speak Arab because I have asked one of my parents are came from Morocco, actually born in Morocco. So I feel it's like so natural. It's like part of comes from, it comes from the same place that both languages. And I feel it's we should speak both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ori, you wrote all of that, those little, those notes where it comes in, sort of that tension between, um, you know, you're the ruler, uh, we, you know, you're in charge. There, that, you know, there is always this awareness that if you're an Israeli Jew, that you do have more power in, in even even in that circle in some way. Yeah, of course, and the language is just uh, like a, a small example of the. Uh, uh, lack of uh, equal equality, you can say that. Equality, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because when you speak a language that you don't think in 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 it, you you basically are discriminated at first hand. You know, you can't express yourself in the most uh, powerful and uh, the powerful way that you you can express yourself so you have to also all the time translate yourself and uh, uh for me it was an, a big issue i thought if to make this film in two language but then i thought it's just to be to be right but it's not the truth the truth is that uh, there is not equ there is no uh, equal relationship between arab and israelis uh, in israel uh, arab and jews um and and yeah, and some of the topics just came from the actresses themselves. Uh, I didn't put words in like uh, Amal Murkus, which plays Nasrin and says what you told uh, about uh, you are the rulers. And uh, she, she said what she feel in that moment. It's not that it was in the script. Uh, there was a lot of improvising. And uh, I didn't think I have the right to put words in her mouth in that topic because it's really uh it's a part of her and part of what she believes and i can't tell her what to say so there was a lot of things that were just like marked as uh, issues to deal with uh, i mean to start with and then they could improvise and say what they wanted to say themselves mm -hmm. i i'm curious how and i'm curious would love to hear from each of you because you all are different um you're, you're all of a certain generation but uh, from different experience life experiences how would you compare sort of what is the state of the day-to-day -day relationships in society today compared to say when you were kids and there might have been i don't know if you were even alive at the lebanon war or you know in the 80s maybe even not you're so you guys are young by my standards, <laughs> but I mean, has there been progress, or just is it just still um, a, a state of constant up and down, up and down? I, I again, I'll just repeat that I think that the impression given of the film is quite different from what we would assume or that what we think we know from the outside so i'm really curious how you feel like if it has changed over time or if it has not i think it's like you said it's always the outside situation you know there's the day-to-day -day life that for me as a kid i didn't know 
that there is supposed to be a difference between Jewish and Arabs because all my family, like half of my family spoke Moroccan, which sounded like Arabic to me. And my mom had a Palestinian boyfriend. And, you know, maybe it's because I lived, I grew up in Tel Aviv and I didn't feel, it's easier, I think, not to feel it in Tel Aviv. And, uh, and, and in the way that I grew up, but then from the outside, you always get those ups and downs. Oh, there's war again and oh, this happened and this happened and this happened and and then you just uh you know personally i stopped <laughs> watching the news and and read, really and like reading papers really? and watching the news like wow when i was uh 12 i was like i don't want to uh, it's just the same thing over and over again and like you said but so that's like the sad part what's coming from the outside but what's coming from the inside is really interesting and dynamic and up to what we want to make it. Yeah, I, I agree with that because I also, well, I think we all come from uh, arts and it's, uh, it's just uh, rooted in the personality of the artist to look deeper. Um, so I remember my days in the university when there uh, was tension after uh, the Gaza war and all of that and I would see uh, Arab students on one side, Jewish students on the other, uh, protesting against each other. And then I would just enter the university with a, with the bus and it's like a whole different world where I with the other can make a beautiful piece of art um, on stage. Mm -hmm. And knowing that we come from very different beliefs and political views, um, but still, we're here, human to human. And that really changed my view of what's happening. I came uh, to Jerusalem afraid to speak Arabic because of these fears that were rooted in me, that were different. Why, why, why would you be afraid to speak Arabic? Um, because I felt uh, people would be repelled by me, knowing that I'm Arab. And I had, there was this tension after each war where students that I used to always talk to suddenly ghost me or so I felt I understood that tension but I also decided to disconnect I needed to disconnect um, because I didn't believe that these wars are ours just like Dana said it's the high guys um, with their own decisions but if it was mine I would want the best for everyone to live in some, because we all want to be happy. We all we all want to protect our children and and give dignity to the other. And we do that in our arts, if not in reality, at least. And, I, I think if, if I can add, Joanna, um, I think there's still a long way to go. Um, I do feel that um, there's like, a lot of um, tension and hardships and like uh, separation uh, in both sides that is really also spread mostly by politicians like in both sides um, I'll, I'll try to take to the optimistic because i i usually try there's no uh, other way um, but in the last year and a half like we we finally had like a bit more functioning government it, when it was the first uh time that uh, there was like an Arabic Jewish uh, uh, collaboration uh, in, in the government. Um, and uh, now there was an election that unfortunately took it to another place. Uh, but I think that um, again, like one of the thing that I th of the things that I think um, is special about this film, but is also real in life, I think that if someone can change this and create intimacy and create more dialogue, it's women and it's in the everyday life. And I think that um, like, uh, again, like um, there is where there are women, uh, there is um, like uh, a true intimacy that can be created. Um, and it does happen also in everyday life. And I have to say that even behind the scenes, uh, these women that like the actors that in many ways like come from such different backgrounds and stories, they stayed in a good relationship, like they really connected, they're talking all day long until today. So 
sometimes they fight. I won't say it's only, but nice. like usually <laughs> that there was like mm -hmm. a real bond mm -hmm. that was created. So to tell you that Sharon, that this is the what happens every day all the time, I wish maybe maybe when we'll have a couple of more generations of, of uh, female leaders, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that there is even a political act and a meaningful act even to do films like this, to create dialogues like this, to work in joint teams of uh, Arabs and Jews. And I think that this can maybe, uh, I again, I, I don't think that fi film can change the world, but I, I, I think that even the process of doing so can start something different and can start a change. And I, I told the read actually, um, when uh, Joanna won the Israeli Academy Award, um, and it, it was like the first thing in the ceremony, I told the read, we can go home, like we did. <laughs> Dana, Dana should have won also, uh, but <laughs> Dana is like the best actress in Israel and she won a lot of awards, but when Joanna, like after all of this process and got this recognition, it, like it's, like it, it made me at least feel that I, I, I had a tiny part of, of doing something meaningful. So, yeah. Well, I, I have to, I can't just let that stand that when you say that film can't change the world, because I don't believe that any of you would be doing what you do if you didn't really believe that telling stories on film can change the world because it doesn't, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't mean that politics doesn't, have and and war and military doesn't have more immediate power but i'm a very big believer that film storytelling over time has a very very profound impact on hearts and minds and ultimately it's how we move forward as people i oh think yeah i think first mm -hmm. of all it can change it changes our world all the participants in this film it's changed right. their world so it's a beginning but uh, about the, uh, Israel, um, I just want to say I don't want to make a, um like ideal picture of Israel through this film because the picture is really not ideal and the situation is really bad in many ways here. And uh, but but I wanted to show a different angle and to to make an, a political act by just empathy and that you'll see uh, women and connect to them and identify with them, even if they say things that are really difficult for you to hear. Uh, that for me is more interesting than showing just the bad things and the pessimistic point of view that usually I see in films uh, that are made about the conflict. So uh, just to, to, to put things straight, it's not ideal at all, but uh, we're trying to change it and trying to make it a better place to raise our kids. Yeah, yeah but it's true. Like I think, like Sharon said, that this conversation is a start. Just to be able to have this conversation and, and listen without shutting yourself out or oh, out from it and just being there and being present with empathy. I think that's a, that's a big change. And it's something that the more we see, uh, the more we, <laughs> we can accept. Yeah, um, I think that that makes it sort of a two sided um, benefit, you know, a good energy. One is what it does for within Israel and that you're reflecting out what's happening in this little community center in Hadera with your mother, Orit, that you've put it on film so so many more people can see it. But it's also true that those of us in the outside world who really just have a very one-sided um, and, and in general quite negative view of Israel, it gives us more nuance and it gives us more of, of an ability to kind of break through the, the narrative of what is, you know, very black and white. This brings such beautiful nuance to people's understanding. So I hope that the film gets widely seen. I wish you so much luck in the Oscar race. It's a big competitive category, but um, uh, I, I, I hope people see the film. And, and in any event, regardless, congratulations. You've made, a, you've made a beautiful story and a beautiful film. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.